ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೊ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಡೇ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಆಲ್ ಲರ್ಂಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಥ್ರೀ ಸಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಥ್ರೀ ಸಿ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ಸ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಟ್ ಥ್ರೋಟ್ ಕಾಂಪಿಟೀಷನ್ ಸೊ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಡೇ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಬೀನ್ ಕವರ್ಡ್ ಸೊ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಕವರ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಟು ಪಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಥ್ರೀ ಸಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಟ್ ಥ್ರೋಟ್ ಕಾಂಪಿಟೀಷನ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೀನ್ ಪ್ರಿವಿಯಸ್ಲಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಪವರ್ ಆಫ್ ಹ್ಯಾಬಿಟ್ಸ್ ಸೆಮಿನಾರ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಎ ಬುಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಬಿಟ್ಸ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ವಿ ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಡಿಪೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಟ್ಸ್ ರಿಟನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಸೊ ಹ್ಯಾಬಿಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟರ್ಮ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ದೀಸ್ ಟರ್ಮ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಮೀನ್ what is the real meaning of this term conditionings so let us uh, describe it our thoughts our desires our actions our habits our character our attitudes our personality our behavior etc gradually become set and are called as our script the script of the mind these vrittis vasanas and samskaras so depending on these things our vrittis vasanas and samskaras that means uh, whatever we imbibe within our uh, subconscious mind all these things have a great impact on our subconscious mind our thoughts desires actions habits character attitude personality behavior all these have a great impact on our subconscious mind and in the, within the subconscious mind all these are getting stored and this impels us to think speak or act in a certain way whatever scripts are stored in the subconscious mind they impel us to act speak think and uh, uh, you know a uh, do in a certain way so these are called as conditionings mm. many of our decisions are impelled by these scripts mm. so this is the effect of conditionings or it is very close with the term habits also so while conditionings are more gross and observable there are some conditionings which are very gross and observable these are you know termed uh, more it is vividly seen as habits whereas some conditionings are subtle these gross conditionings are more visible as habits but subtle conditionings also impel us to act in a certain way so these mental scripts play a very vital role in our life if the scripts in the mind we are writing which is based on the whimsical nature of the mind whatever the mind wants we are doing that and those types of uh, scripts are written in the mind then this will create a cycle and this cycle will ultimately lead us to danger <coughs> because we have seen in bhagavad gita that uncontrolled mind is our greatest enemy whereas controlled mind is our greatest friend so when the mind is uncontrolled right now our mind is not controlled even arjuna arjuna was ready to control the all the winds of the whole world but arjuna also told krishna that my mind is not controlled so we are acting in whatever way our mind is dictating us so if we follow the whimsical nature of the mind mind is compared with a 
with a uh, uh, with a mad elephant a mad elephant is uh, it is very dangerous a mad elephant can throw a car in the sky he a mad elephant can destroy a house very easily a mad elephant can very easily kill thousands you know you know tens of hundreds of men it can kill but that same elephant you can see some videos in the youtube where elephants are drawing picture of elephant so nicely they are drawing so that is not mad elephant that is controlled elephant it is trained elephant so on one hand mad elephant is so dangerous whereas on the other hand a, a trained elephant is so uh, beautifully acting so same is the case with mind so in general our mind is very very uncontrolled and it is like a mad elephant of course we are chanting hare krishna maha mantra and we are in the process of you know making our mind suitable uh, as compared to you know outside people who are who are you know not following any spiritual process of course we are we are in the process but uh, still this mind is so powerful mm. it cannot be controlled overnight uh, it's not a magic that you know everything uh, you know the mind will stop uh, bothering us overnight mm. it's not like that so we have to follow this process and gradually uh, the mind will be the scripts of the mind will be written in in according to the scripts of the scriptures if the script of the mind is written according to the shastras according to the scriptures then the mind will act properly then the mind will act uh, it will be acting in the way we want it and it will not cause danger so in this regard bhagavad gita 5.22 fifth chapter 22nd verse a very beautiful verse ye hi samsparsha jabhoga dukha yonaya evate adi antavanta kanteya nateshu ramate budha it is telling an intelligent person does not take part in the sources of misery buddhiman vyakti जो चीज में मिजरी होता है उसमें भाग नहीं लेता है विच आर ड्यू टू कॉन्टैक्ट विद द मेटेरियल सेंसेस ओ सन ऑफ कुंती सच प्लेजर्स हैव ए बिगिनिंग एंड एन एंड सो द वाइज मैन डज नॉट डिलाइट इन देम सो सेंस एंजॉयमेंट जस्ट लाइक द सेंसेस द टांग मे वॉन्ट टू ड्रिंक वाइन but whenever the sense is coming in contact with the sense object the tongue is the sense and the sense object is the wine the tongue is con- coming in contact with the sense of object that is wine then at first one may forget the world uh, by partaking wine by taking wine but its effect will be seen very soon the next day it is completely hangover then there is vomiting so whenever bhagavad gita says whenever sense is coming in contact with sense objects then actually misery arises one may take the cigarette and feel it is very cool but it is actually burning the lungs nothing uh, eyes is acting it is uh, it is getting burnt the lungs are getting burnt it is hot so nothing cool is uh, there in you know in terms of physics so after some time the misery arises so whenever sense comes in contact with the sense objects then misery is taking birth so therefore krishna says in bhagavad gita to not to indulge the senses in sense objects but to indulge the senses in the service of the lord then it will be in its proper situation for example the sense object tongue can be applied in the service of the lord simply by chanting hare krishna maha mantra hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare another way of 
utilizing this tongue is by taking Krishna Prasadam. So, and the third way of utilizing this tongue is by telling something related to the Supreme Lord, Krishna. So, in this way, the tongue will not be utilized in, in, in a bad way. The tongue will not be utilized or engaged in giving some, telling some nonsense thing, telling some, you know, you know giving some, uh, using some bad language mm. or in, in a bad way. It is not indulged in that or it is not in, engaged in the objects of the sense objects. So, when the tongue is utilized in the service of God, Krishna, then it is in its original constitutional position and it will give pleasure. It will not give unhappiness or it will not give the misery. We will see another verse from the Bhagavad Gita, second chapter, 59th verse. Vishaya vini vartante niraharasya dehina rasa varjam raso apiyasya param drishtva nibaratate. It is telling, though the embodied soul may be restricted from sense enjoyment, the taste for sense objects remains. But seizing such engagements by experiencing a higher taste, he is fixed in consciousness. So, let us consider an example. One day you are very hungry and you are coming from college, you are very hungry. You came, you came from college a little late, for example, and you are feeling very hungry and you see a plate in which there is very nice pulao, very nice fried rice, very nice gulab jamun, very beautiful sandesh, very nice, you know, uh, chili paneer sabji, very, very nice sweet rice. A plate is made with all these items. And on the other hand, there is another plate in which there is uh, some khichudi of, of the morning or the previous day, some, you know, uh, you know uh, khichudi is there uh, in another plate, which is a previous day or in the mornings. So, which plate will you take? Which plate will you uh, go and grab? You are going to grab that plate, which is having all these different, different, very delicious items, isn't it? So, when we develop, similarly, when the soul develops a higher taste, then the soul will not want to go to the lower taste. So, higher taste can be developed by engaging the senses in Krishna consciousness or engaging the senses in the service of Krishna. How, just like I have already given the example of the tongue, how can it be engaged in the service of Krishna? Let us consider the example of the eyes. The eyes can be utilized in seeing the very beautiful form of Krishna, Radha Krishna, the very beautiful form of Ram, Lakshman, Sita, Hanuman. It can be utilized in seeing the very beautiful form of Lord Vishnu. It can be utilized in seeing the very beautiful form of different devotees of Krishna. The, it can be utilized in seeing the very beautiful form of the spiritual, you know, the very beautiful scenario of the spiritual world. It can be utilized in seeing so many nice spiritual items. It can be utilized in seeing the very beautiful temples of the Lord. So, the, when the eyes are utilized in a proper spiritual way, the eyes will no longer want to deviate and go and see the bad stuff. When the eyes, eyes can be utilized in seeing many Krishna conscious movies also. So, in, in spiritual life, there is no lack of movies also. In this lockdown time, I am every day seeing, every day one drama or one movie I am seeing every day. And those dramas are so beautiful. 
uh, from the scriptures it is taken from the scriptures uh, so thrilling and so you cannot take your eyes off those dramas so there is no lack of you know krishna conscious cinemas also krishna conscious dramas also there are unlimited dramas can be made mm. our, our vedic scriptures are so vast and so interesting so if our eyes are engaged in that way the eyes will no longer want to see you know uh, the you know the uh, you know different other nonsense things so in that way we can engage all our mind and senses in the proper way the higher taste the way of the higher taste and by that it will not want to go to the lower taste so developing this higher taste is very important in our life and if you can engage our mind and senses in that way then we will really be happy and we will be blissful so uh, if we if we uh, engage this engagement is important mm. we cannot allow our mind to be blank mm. every time our mind can is always thinking something uh, or the other mm. it is not uh, uh, vacant at any time so if we give the higher taste engagement it will not disturb us now we will see about cut throat competition in the material world there exists a cycle called as food cycle which is a cycle amongst different animals one animal is the food of another animal so this is called as jeevo jeevasya jeevanam in our vedic scriptures in one of the shlokas so one time one boy he was in the class and his madam was there in the class she was teaching mathematics and that boy saw a lizard eating a butterfly in the wall that lizard ate a butterfly in the wall of the classroom and that boy asked madam that why did god not keep non living eatables for all creatures why should a lizard eat a butterfly how much pain the butterfly must have felt she said she said that don't you know the ecological cycle a frog eats a fly a snake eats a frog and an eagle eats a snake and so on so then the boy said yes madam i am aware of that cycle my question is why should this cycle at all exist because it is a cycle of violence caused by one creature to another she had no answer later when that boy grew up and studied came in contact with uh, shrimad bhagavatam then he could understand that when a tiger kills a deer by tearing his body into pieces the soul in the body of the deer leaves that body and goes into another body and as such the soul can never be killed still since the soul desired to live a life independent of the supreme lord he keeps wandering in this material world in dream like situation from one body to another facing the painful death of the material body so this material body is temporary human beings are not really existing in this food cycle human being is not the food of any animal imagine a deer who is uh, who is in the morning the deer is going to the pond to take water to drink water and the tiger is waiting in the morning the the deer is taking you know his breakfast and the and the uh, tiger is waiting to eat that uh, deer but imagine if human beings human being is sitting for a breakfast and some another 
creature is waiting to eat the human being. It's not like that, you know. So human being uh, is given a special position. Human being is not included in this food cycle. Human being is not the food of any animal, the staple food of any animal. Because God has given this human form of life for a special purpose. For understanding the science of the soul, to understand the self, to understand the science of God. Therefore, this special opportunity has been given only in this human form of life. So, although the human being is not included in the food cycle as such, but still human beings are also dying. The man is also dying and the animals are also dying. So everyone, including human and animals, everyone is put into the cycle of birth and death. And this cycle of birth and death, it is not a, uh, it is it is definitely a painful cycle. It is not a painless cycle at all. So, why have we been put into this painful cycle? That answer is given in Srimad Bhag Bhagavatam very vividly. Because we have chosen to live a life independent of the Supreme Lord, leaving the spiritual world, we came to the material world trying to be independent of God. Therefore, we have been put into these material bodies. We have been put into this temporary world. We are identifying with this temporary world. When the body is dead, we feel that when the body will be dead, we will be dead. But actually, no, the soul will not be dead. So the fear of death is there in everybody. Because everybody is identifying himself with the body. They don't know that he is a spirit soul who can never be killed. So this cycle, we can get rid of this cycle of birth and death once we return back to the spiritual world. But in this material world, if somebody is planning to live in the material world, then he has to be in the cycle of birth and death, either in the animal body or in the uh, human body. Actually, this cycle of birth and death is kept, is designed in such a way that the living entity, the soul, can learn that this material world is not the proper place for me to live. Let us go back to the spiritual world. So this material world is compared with a correctional house. A jail or a correctional house. A jail is sometimes termed as a correctional house. Shangshodhanagar. Shangshodhanagar. That means the reformations are given in the jail. The degree of punishment or the degree of reformations depends from person to person. If one is following the laws of the government within the jail, he will be immediately released. Very soon he will be released. Mm. Sometimes we have even saw in case of you know uh, persons committing very grievous offenses also, if in the jail he behaves very well with the authorities, sometimes, you know, they are given mercy also. If he is repenting for his crime, then, and he is really trying to follow the laws of the government, sometimes they are, you know, they are pardoned of greater punishment also. This is practically, this history is there. So, even in material world, it is like so. So we are also in this correctional house of the material world. And all these traps, troubles, troublesome existence of the material world is to make us rectify. It's just acting as a correctional house to help us become properly situated in following the laws of God. And when we follow the laws of God, then we will be allowed in the spiritual world. Mm. So that is the process how the material world acts. Now we will see about the status of 
cutthroat competition in this material world. This material world is a world of cutthroat competitions. And of course, the food cycle is also a cutthroat competition. But let us see about the cutthroat competitions in the human society. In this time of COVID-19, although the animals, other animals are not killing the human beings, but the viruses are killing the human beings, definitely. And about the economy, everyone knows, you know, so much impact has been uh, felt in the economy. The jobs in America, three million people have become jobless. When we are in the material world, there are different kinds of competitions. When we were in class 10, then we thought that after getting good marks in class 10, all our problems will be over. Then suddenly we went to class 12 or class 11, 12, and immediately there was pressure of getting a good rank in the IITJ uh, in different competitive exams. So many people, so many students go to quota and work hard day and night for cracking different competitive exams, for getting entrance into different uh, good colleges in India. Then we thought that after getting admission in a good college, in IITs, in NITs, in different colleges, our life will be successful. But whenever we land up, even in the IITs, then we feel, oh, just by landing up here in any college, I, it's not the end of the game. I have to score good marks in the graduation, in the semesters. So there is competition again. Then in the fourth year, there is competition to crack good jobs, huge competition. And then there is the gate exam, the CAT exam, the IAS exam, the IES exam. So many competitions. Some, somebody wants to get a government job in railway, in bank. It is so tough exam. Somebody wants to open a business. He wants to become, become an entrepreneur. Uh, so there is again competition, so much competition. Even those who have become great entrepreneurs, like the Anilamba, uh, uh, Mukesh Ambani, the owner of Jio, he is also having competition with Airtel, Vodafone. Hmm. Somebody uh, wants to play cricket, he wants to become um, Virat Kohli. So there is huge competition to play in the IPL, the Indian cricket side. There is so much competition among the students in colleges, even to get a good girlfriend or boyfriend, right? Somebody wants to become an actor. He wants to become Shahrukh Khan, Salman Khan. So much competition is there. Somebody wants to become a singer. He wants to become Orijit Singh. He wants to keep become Sunidhi Chauhan. So much competition. Uh, he has to take part in Indian Idol. Mm. So everywhere there is competitions. But every step we feel that just by getting succeeded in this competition, I will be happy. There will be no more problem. Just after cracking this competition, it, will go, it is going to be completely over. No other problem is going to be there. But it doesn't happen. Even among the most successful persons, there is competition. So, therefore, it's just like, uh, it's just like this donkey you can see in the picture. The carrot is kept in front of the donkey. The washerman is putting a lot of weight in the back of the donkey, telling that, you go forward, do this, you'll get that carrot. But this carrot is never achieved. So, we are giving, we are facing so many competitions. 
one competition after another competition uh, there is competition this material world is full of competition till the end uh, till the very end of our life there will be competition isn't isn't there is a competition in the in the hospitals of italy now there was competition in the hospitals of italy who will get the care of coronavirus everyone was not getting the care of coronavirus in the hospitals of italy so there is competition even till the last breath of our lives so this material world is the world of competitions if you see the countries the big countries within this uh, within this planet there is competition amongst these countries also we will see if we see amongst the countries nowadays america and china are locked in a fierce competition of getting the tag who will be the most powerful nation on the earth planet the countries the developed powerful countries they developing the most sophisticated technologically advanced weaponry and military systems to safeguard their territory they are in a competition of defense they are a competition of military race so even amongst countries there is competition united nations could not stop this competition neither have they been able to stop wars so we want peace but still we are eluded we don't get peace the national the national leaders are wanting peace bhagwan ram ke siwa ram ke bina ram rajya chahta hai sab koi ram rajya chahta hai lekin ram ke bina every country leader is wanting peace but without god in the center so ram ke bina ram rajya kaise hoga jab ram ko bhagwan ko center mein laya jayega tabhi to peace sambhav hai you know what alexander the great said alexander was not an ordinary person he was called sikandar the emperor of the whole world alexander said bury my body and don't build any monument keep my hands out of the coffin so that the people know the one who won the world has nothing in the hands when he died everything actually belongs to krishna alexander could realize it at the end moment of his life no matter how much we compete over the things of this world ultimately it will be snatched away from us by the cruel hands of death great empires of the world they have all been vanquished so many powerful kings have come and gone no trace of them has remained time is so powerful so if we acknowledge this fact that everything belongs to krishna then there is question of peace and happiness bhukta ram jagya tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram shuridam sarva bhuta nam gyatva maham shanti mrichati this is the formula for peace and happiness to acknowledge that everything belongs to krishna the material world is compared to a forest fire imagine a very nice building in the middle of the forest and a forest fire is there and the building owner is telling that okay no problem i will adjust in this place will he be able to adjust he will not be able to adjust he will be burned he will be in trouble there is no doubt about it therefore i sing every day in the morning samsar dava nalalida loka tranaya karunya ghana ghana tvam praptasya kalyana gunarnavasya vande guru shri charanarabindam in our morning prayers we acknowledge that this material world is a forest fire there is no question of 
adjustment in this material world one not one cannot just adjust and be happy in this material world real happiness does not exist at all in this material world no matter how much we try to manipulate matter no matter how much we try to control matter no matter whatever we do it's never going to be it's never going to be the place of permanent happiness and satisfaction has anyone seen a mirage in a desert a mirage looks like there is water in that place but whenever any animal or a man goes to the mirage he eventually dies that pla place that place is so hot and there is no trace of water in that place in the mirage similarly the material world is also very glittering it is always giving us hope that oh i can enjoy by this way i can enjoy if i do this i will enjoy if i do that that's how the material world is alluring us just like a mirage in the desert but we are trying to enjoy in the material world we are trying very hard but there is no enjoyment there is no real satisfaction we don't know where to enjoy and how to enjoy forever so there was a song by rolling stone the famous band and the song is like that very famous song there is no satisfaction there is no satisfaction there is no satisfaction but i am trying i am trying i am trying we are trying so many ways to adjust and be happy in the material world but unfortunately we cannot because we can be only happy a child can be only happy when he is in the lap of the father if we go back to the spiritual world where there exists real love real happiness we are competing for love actually we are competing for happiness that is the real competition through all the things that we do in this world we are actually competing to get love and love somebody and be loved by somebody the real competition actually if we go deep is the competition of love but that love we are not getting that true love that true selfless unmotivated uninterrupted love is not available in this material world the spiritual world which is the world of ever increasing bliss anandam budivardhanam the bliss is always increasing the happiness is always increasing in the spiritual world spiritual world there is no question of birth old age disease and death there is no question of any anxiety therefore the spiritual world is called as vaikuntha jahan pe koi bhi kuntha nahi hai kuntha matlab anxiety jahan pe koi bhi anxiety jahan pe koi bhi duschinta nahi hai wahi hai vaikuntha the spiritual world the spiritual world is a world where every step is a dance every word is a song every cow is a surabhi cow and every tree is kalpa vriksha capable of fulfilling all our desires who would not like to be in such a competition less world there is no question of competition to get food there is no question of competing for our livelihood there is there is however one competition in the spiritual world there is only one competition which exists in the spiritual world at that and that competition is the competition of service how there is competition krishna the supreme lord 
There is a competition between Krishna and his devotees in the spiritual world. Krishna wants to serve his devotees by whatever means possible. And the devotees are trying to serve Krishna by whatever ways possible. There is a competition between the Supreme Lord and his devotees. Supreme Lord is trying his ultimate best to please his devotees and the devotees are trying their ultimate best to please Krishna. That is the competition of the spiritual world which in our Shastras in Chaitanya Charitamrita it is described as Duye Lage Hura Huri in a script, in a sloka. That means there is competition between the Lord and his servants, the Lord and his devotees. There is a competition of love. That is the competition in the spiritual world. I will tell two stories. There is a great there was a great Acharya named as Raghunath Das Goswami. He used to live in Vrindavan. He was a great saintly person. Every day he used to chant many, many thousands and thousands of names of Krishna. And every day two thousand people used to come to see him in Vrindavan. And he used to stay beside a pond named as Radha Kunda. One day, a tiger came. He was sitting and chanting beside the pond, Radha Kunda. And a tiger also came. This is, a, this is the uh, situation. This is 500 years ago. Hmm. He was chanting in the bank of this pond, Radha Kunda. And a tiger also came to drink water from that pond. The tiger simply drank the water and simply went away. Hmm. There was no question of eating. The man, the tiger didn't have any desire to eat the man. Another beautiful pastime is there in our scriptures. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna himself, Krishna himself came 500 years back as Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was going from Jagannath Puri to Vrindavan, he took the path of Jharikhanda forest. The modern forests in the areas of Jharkhand and Madhya Pradesh, that is called as Jharikhanda forest. When the Lord was going in that forest, many, many animals, elephants, tigers, snakes, deers, buffaloes, cows, many, many animals came towards the Lord. Supreme Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And he was dancing in ecstasy. And all the animals were dancing and chanting this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra in the tunes of the Lord. They were embracing the Lord and they were embracing each other. The tiger was embracing the cat, the cat was embracing the goat, the tiger was even embracing the deer and chanting in ecstasy, the dancing in the tunes of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. That place, Charan Pahari, is still there, one can visit in the in the state of Jharkhand, the Charan Pahari, that place, there are so many stones and there are so many footmarks, the footprints of the molten stone, the stone melted by the footprints of these animals and of the Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That place is still protected and one can go. This place is called as Charan Pahari. It is there in Jharkhand, in the forest area, still now. It's a recent past time, 500 years back. So when the Lord is there, when 
God is there in the center. Even in the world, even in this world, there is no competition remains. So, can't there be? So there, in the spiritual world, certainly there should be no competitions. Anandam budi vardhanam patipadam purnam ritaswadhanam So in the association with Krishna, there is ever increasing bliss and there is no necessity of mundane competition. In the material world, the relationships are not everlasting. The relationships keep on changing and it ends certainly with death. But in the spiritual world, the relationship with the Supreme Lord and with each other is everlasting, immortal, unending. And there is no fear of death destroying those relationships. One can develop <coughs> the relationship of being the lover of the Lord. One can develop the relationship of being like the parents of the Lord. One can develop the relationship of being the friend of the Lord. And in so many ways, one can develop relationship with the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna in the spiritual world. There is no question of hunger and thrust in the spiritual world that we experience in the material world. That does not mean that uh, there is no food in the spiritual world and people don't eat any food in the spiritual world. Of course they do. But there is no question of hunger and thrust that we experience in the material world. That kind of mundane hunger and thrust, thirst, does not exist in the spiritual world. The spiritual world is all about sweetness. All about the sweet relationship between the Supreme Lord Krishna and his devotees. And when there is that real satisfaction in sweetness, that spiritual sweetness that we are all looking forward, the spiritual beauty that we are all looking forward. And when we reach the spiritual world, yad gatvana nivartante tad dhama paramam mama, one who reaches the spiritual world, he never has to return to this mundane world of birth and death. In this figure, the two cats, in one's mouth there is the kitten, the child of the cat, and in other, another's mouth, mouth there is the rat. The rat is going to face imminent death. He is in fear, whereas this kitten is not in fear at all. That is the difference between death of a spiritual personality and the death of an ordinary person. An ordinary, for an ordinary person, death is fear personified. Death is so fearful, just like this rat is in the mouth of this cat. The rat is fearful. Death is, death is like, you know, the whole existence he feels that his whole existence is going to be over. He is in extreme fear. But for a devotee, for a spiritual personality, for a Krishna conscious personality, death is like this kitten being in the mouth of this cat. For a devotee, this is the last death. He knows that after this death, I am going to go to the spiritual world. I am going to transfer myself. I am going to get transferred to the spiritual world. So it is the last death for me. And it's a glorious death. So many great personalities died a glorious death, like Bhishma Dev in the Mahabharata. Bhishmadev's body was pierced by thousands of arrows from the, from the bow of Arjuna. Bhishmadev was, was 
you know, in that position with thousands of arrows struck through his body. But still, he was giving spiritual lessons to the Pandavas even at that position. And he left his body by seeing Krishna, by remembering Krishna. When Krishna was in front, when Krishna came at that time, Bhishma Dev left the body and it was such a glorious death. So for an ordinary person, people die in the hospitals, passing stool, urine, you know, crying, yelling, ah, ooh, ah, they scream like this when death comes. But just see Bhishma Dev, such a glorious death. He went back to the spiritual world and he was eternally situated in the spiritual world. So this figure depicts the difference between the death of an ordinary person and the devotee, a Krishna conscious person, a spiritual person. So with this, I'd like to end here. And if we can remember that simply by chanting this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. This is the ultimate form of religion, the ultimate form of spiritual practice within this age of Kali Yuga. And this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is going to give us all perfection in due course of time. If we simply attentively chant, this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And the more we chant, we can increase our rounds now. Those who are chanting two rounds, they can chant four rounds. Those who are chanting four rounds, they can chant six rounds. Hmm. Therefore, this is the ultimate necessity in human form of life in Kali Yuga, chanting the holy names of Krishna Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. I thank all of you for taking your valuable time and giving a listening, hearing to this uh, topic and of course tolerating me. I beg pardon if I have bored you. Hare Krishna, looking forward for your association. Again, stay safe in your home. Hare Krishna.